Hello everybody. How's everyone doing tonight? Welcome to the Friday stream. I hope everything is working. I hope the sound is coming through. Everything's looking good. Let me know if the music is a bit loud. Um, I'm just gonna make it slightly lower the music volume. Yeah, so welcome everybody. Today we are going to model a electric guitar in Blender. So yeah, follow along, download Blender, install Blender, and uh, yeah, let's learn some Blender. Welcome, welcome. And yeah, I've got a little stream deck, so hopefully I won't be forgetting to change my scenes anymore. Um, so things are just a bit easier, so I can quickly just press the buttons to switch between Blender and Blender No Cam and the chat and the Be Right Back. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. So um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. And I'm going to share some coupons to my Blender course that's on Udemy. So I've got quite a few coupons that I'm going to give away. Um, if everyone's looking for a coupon, just let me know in the chat and I will just paste the link in there. So yeah, I think let's jump into Blender and see what we are going to do today. So brand new scene, I'm going to delete everything and uh, then I'm going to drag in my reference picture, which is just, this is the guitar that we're going to model. So very basic. <coughs> so first of all, I'm just going to reset the position of this reference. So just setting the rotation and the position to zero. And we've got some nice rock music today. So this is actually from uh, Stream Beats, Stream Beats original, uh, pretty cool stuff. So I think I'm gonna rotate it 180, uh, maybe like something like that. So I think the size is fine. We're obviously not gonna worry about scale for this. So um, yeah, I think let's let's start. So first of all, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set this empty that I brought in. I'm gonna make it so I can't select it. So right here at the top, you can click on this little filter and then select this selectable and then just disable that on the empty so then we can't select that. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into top view um, and then on this empty, I just wanna set the opacity so it's not like 100% opaque so I'm gonna just bring this down something like that so we can kind of just see it there and I'm gonna start with a curve so I'm gonna create a Bezier curve so shift A and then curve and then Bezier just like that and um, yeah, then I'm just gonna move kind of this into position and I'm gonna go into edit mode and then I'm just gonna start kind of moving these points around and you can also use rotate to rotate them. And I'm gonna try and create this shape <coughs> by using as little of these points as possible. So let's see how that goes. So you can obviously scale these points as well to kind of just get that curve to be in the right place and then once you've got this one point selected you can just uh, press E to extrude and then just rotate again and you can also move these points individually so I can click on one of these points and then G to kind of do do that um, okay and then I'm just gonna move this one scale it down and then extrude this one again Let's see if we can get this curve to work. So I'm gonna take this point and then scale that down to kind of make that curve a little sharper. And I'm gonna do the same with this side. So just scale that one maybe. We can always go in and fine tune it a bit later. Um, okay, so I'm gonna extrude this one again and maybe put it around, maybe somewhere here. Just gonna move this one into place again. All right, so this one I'm gonna extrude and then I'm gonna rotate that. And uh, I think we need to do something with this one as well. So I'm kinda just gonna move that in a bit. We'll probably have to create another point 
here somewhere. So if you want to insert another point, you can just select those two vertices, right click subdivide, and then that's going to create an extra point for you, just like that. And uh, then I'm going to extrude this point again, and I'm going to move this little arm or this little, what do you call it, like a handle. And yeah, I'm just going to kind of put them around there like so and I'll scale this point in. How's everyone doing today? Everyone having a good holiday Friday and long weekend. So if you want to close your loop, just right click on your curve and then you can uh, select this toggle cyclic and that's going to close it down for you. So I'm just going to scale this one in like so and uh, yeah, I'm just going to kind of move that into place. So I'm going to try and fine tune this a bit because this is not perfect. So I'm just going to try and kind of reposition some of these points, maybe rotate that one slightly and maybe scale this point. Which one? Scale this one maybe. something like that doesn't have to be perfect obviously but as close as you can get it something like that uh, this curve is a bit tricky so I'm gonna add one more point in between these so right click and subdivide and I'm just gonna rotate that one and maybe uh, let me see yeah, I'll probably let me just move this one back. I'm not going to create another point there. I think it's fine. Like so. Okay, cool. So we have that curve. So if we hide our reference, you can see that's the, the curve we have. So I think that's okay for now. And um, all right. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to hide my reference. And uh, then I'm going to go into the curve settings on this curve. And you can actually set this one to 2D, but I'm going to leave it on 2D as because I started on 2D. Um, and then you can go to geometry and we're going to extrude this. So just increase this extrude number. And I'm just going to give it like a thickness, something like that. And um, then we want to convert this to a mesh but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make a duplicate just for in case we want to come back and maybe change this curve because you can go into edit mode and you can change this curve right now but once I've converted it to a mesh then you can't um, change that curve anymore so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna shift D and then just kind of move it off to the side and then with this extra curve selected just press M on your keyboard and I'm going to move it to a new collection and I'm just going to call this backup and click OK. And then here in the outliner, I'm just going to disable this backup so we don't see anything that we put into, into that. OK, so now we've got this curve and I'm going to convert it to a mesh. So right click and then I'm going to go convert to mesh. And I can see it's a normal mesh. So we can go in here and we can start editing these points and everything should be fine. Now, the main issue when using these types of curves is to, it's quite tricky to close the top. Well, we can close the top just by filling it. Let me show you. So if we take all these edges around the top and we press F on the keyboard, it's gonna create a face, which is obviously an ingon because it's got multiple um, edges but I think it's okay um, it's probably not the best thing to do as you can see it's messing up the smooth shading so I'm gonna just right click on this object and say shade flat so that's looking a lot better and then I'm gonna do the same with the bottom section so just select all of these lines and then press F on the keyboard and we fold them just like so and we can always go in later and we can bevel this so you can select all of these edges and kind of just bevel this like so obviously you need to be careful not to overlap your your vertices but i'm not going to do it right now i think we can we can do that later 
So let's enable our reference image again. And let's save that. So I think next what we can do is we can start with the, I don't even know what you call these parts. Um, so this is gonna be quite funny. <laughs> the arm. So that part, is it the, f the fret? I don't know, I I don't know. I've got a guitar, but I, I don't know the, the lingo. So yeah. Um, before we do that, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna share one of the coupon or the coupon link in the chat. So anyone who is in the chat can just pick it up. Um, this coupon link is only active for I think two days. Um, but once you once you get the course, once you use the coupon, you you keep the course forever. So you just need to kind of grab it in the next two days. So I would recommend doing it probably today. So I'm gonna paste it into the chat right now uh, let me just say there we go and I'm just gonna say uh, Udemy course coupon whoops coupon and um, grab one quick okay there we go so the link is in the chat and yeah happy happy blending so i'm gonna hide this body section i'm just gonna rename this and call it body i think that is the right name and then yeah we're gonna do this this part does anyone know what you call this 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 part like from here to here it's probably the neck i think it's the neck And for that, I'm gonna use a simple cube. So let's create a cube and scale it down. I'm just gonna see, I'm just gonna try and get the thickness to be something similar to that, just like that. And I'm gonna go back into top view and now we can start to kind of just pos position this around. So I'm gonna hide the body again and I'm going to take this cube and kind of just move it over this section here. And I'll probably enable X-ray so we can see through it. So now we can go into edit mode. And I'm going to just start by moving these points off to the side. And then I'm going to move these points off to the other side. Something, something like that. And then I'm just going to move these two points down uh, sorry in the Y Y axis and then I'm gonna move this one slightly up and then these two we can just grab on the Y just move them in same with these two G Y move them in okay now we need some loop cuts so I'm just going to create a few loop cuts around here. So let's start by adding, I wonder if I need to do one on each fret. That's probably a good idea. So let's quickly do that. So I'm just going to loop cut all of these and kind of just put them into place. Okay, so I'm just gonna slide these ones over and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, let's just zoom in here a bit. Whoops. Alright, and let's add more loop cuts. Loop cuts, loop cuts, loop cuts. Okay, hey Sarush. Um, watch the course and been using Blender for some time. Um, yeah, man, cool. I'm glad you enjoyed the course. You can always um, grab a coupon and give it to someone you know. 
So I'm going to take these two vertices and kind of just scale them out in Y. Just to kind of smooth that out. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So let's bring the body back and let's just switch off the reference quickly. Yeah, so that's looking kind of okay, I think. Uh, next, what we can do is let's bring our reference image back and see what we can do next. So we can either do this piece that's going to go on top of the body, that cutout section, or we can do this section here at the back. I'm not sure. What do you call this? Does anyone know what you call this piece at the back? Let me know in the chat. So I think let's do, let's do this shape that's going to sit on top of our body. Um, I think let's do that next. So I'm going to create a new curves and then create that with the curves obviously so i'm going to go shift a and then curves bezier curve and let's just move it into position go into edit mode and then i'm just going to start to move these points around and see if we can match the shape with as few points as we can possibly use this is always better to use less points because then you're you can always add more points in the end or later on or you can subdivide it um, so yeah it's always good to try and keep your geometry as um, less dense as possible so let me just move that sometimes it's tricky like you'll see this curve here think the only way to kind of get that perfect is to add another point so sometimes you just have to do it so then you can just kind of slide this one around and kind of match it like that this point's also a little strange like so all right so this side we're going to extrude so just press e on the keyboard to extrude that out and, and then we're going to rotate it and scale this one out like so <clears throat> and then this one we need to create quite a sharp point so let's see if we can do something like that hey michael thanks for the message yeah the curve tool is really amazing um you can create so many cool things with it like if you're doing like a logo or anything it's just just so cool sometimes it's tricky to get um nice geometry or nice topology but sometimes you don't really have to worry about that. If you're not creating stuff for a game or for a s big studio um, and someone else is going to work on it, then you don't really have to worry too much about your geometry, I think. It's always good practice, but yeah, if you're just kind of doing a little personal project, it's not always that important. But yeah, Michael, grab a... U Udemy coupon um, I pasted it there in the chat so just grab one and uh, as I mentioned earlier the, the link is only avail um, available for two days but once you've grabbed the course you get you'll keep it forever but you just need to use the link in the next two days so yeah grab one um, all right so I'm gonna close this loop so I'm gonna right click and say toggle cyclic let's do a save and uh, yeah, I think we need to put one more point in between here. So I'm going to select these two points and just subdivide to create one extra point right here. And I'm going to see if we can do something here to make this a little nicer. Probably like that. And then this side, I'm trying to see, uh, this point is still not right. Let me just fix this one quick. Maybe let's add another point between these two, subdivide, and then let's just drag that out, scale it up a bit. And I think I'll have to create one point in between these two. So let's see what we can do here. Yeah, this will probably do the trick. And this one, what's happening here? 
so this one I'm gonna grab and just move out slightly this one move over and then scale that one back in this one doesn't look too healthy so I'm just gonna try and get something nice okay let's say we are happy with that so let's see what we're gonna do next let's hide our reference again and we can unhide the body well let's keep the body hidden for now so I'm gonna extrude this one as well so I'm gonna go into my spline settings or my curve settings and then go down to geometry and then extrude maybe just slightly I think this one is we're just gonna use like the top section so and then I'm gonna duplicate this just to make a backup if we want to come back so as I mentioned earlier always make a backup once when you're using uh, curves because once you convert it to a mesh you can't go back and kind of edit it because you can now go back and I can change these points and it will update this extrusion um, but yeah for now I'm just gonna duplicate it so shift D and then just move it off to the side and then with this one selected I'm gonna press M to move to collection and then I'm going to move it to my backup collection. And you'll see I've hidden my backup collection in the outline so you can't see it. Alrighty then. So we're going to take um, this one curve and we're going to convert it to mesh. Right click and uh, convert to mesh. So now you can see it's a normal mesh and first of all I want to right click and say shade flat I don't like the smooth shading on this one right now so I'm just not gonna not gonna do that so let's go into edit mode and I just want to connect all these edges at the top so I'm gonna select all the edges press F on your keyboard F F F to fold that same with the bottom section and um, yeah that's right like that and okay so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna just move this up slightly and then bring our body back and uh, then I'm just gonna drop it into that mesh so GZ and just drag it down until it only kind of sticks out like that um, I just wanna have a look quickly at the reference so you can see the neck area is actually overlapping this section as well and then it goes out so I think let's do let's try and do the same here so the neck piece will have to move up as well just so it kind of sticks out above both of those pieces and um, yeah so it's got a little bit of a rounding on that side so we can do that maybe let's just I'm just gonna isolate this this next section so to isolate something select it and then press shift H and that's just gonna isolate that for you so let's see if we can bevel this you can probably do a bit of a bevel and maybe add some segments just a few just to round it off a bit but yeah I think that that's looking pretty cool hey possible welcome to the stream uh, yeah you're not <laughs> too late um, just started a few minutes ago so grab a coupon you'll see in the in the chat there's a Udemy coupon uh, just grab that or just use the link in the next two days because it's only valid for two days but once you have the course you'll keep it forever so enjoy <coughs> okay so I think we are okay with the front section for now I'm not sure I'm too happy with the way this looks but I think once we add a bevel around these edges things are gonna start to look a bit better we can always maybe add a bevel to the body quick so I'm just gonna select the edge around the top and just do a bevel and then very slightly I'm just gonna bevel maybe not even that much just just a bit like that 
Okay, that's already looking uh, much better. And I think I'm gonna do the same with this inside as well. So I'm gonna go into edit mode, and then I'm gonna select all those edges, and then control B to bevel, and kind of just pull them down just a small little bevel. Maybe we can even decrease these to like, ah, let's keep it on four. We're still okay with geometry. Okay, so let's save that. That's looking pretty cool. And um, I think it's time to do this back section. What do you call this this part? Does anyone know? Does anyone know what you call this little section here? So this we can probably do with just a, a cube and kind of... But I'm wondering if we should use a curves as well. Hmm. It's a lot easier by... Yeah, I'm just going to use curves. I think that's, that's the easiest thing to do here. So let's save. And uh, we're going to create a new Bezier curve. And just move it to the side. Go into edit. And uh, yeah, so the music is kind of matching our our project today. Uh, if anyone want to check it out, it's called Stream Beats. Stream Beats are original and it's on Spotify. And it's free to use in any of your videos and any stream anywhere you want. So yeah, really cool. It's a guy called uh, Alpha Gaming on YouTube and he produces all these free things for people to use really clever actually because he's making his money via um, Spotify because they pay per stream so it's a really clever thing actually okay so I'm just gonna kind of see what I'm doing here uh, we can probably hide the body or the, the neck section for now Maybe just straighten that out a bit. And um, okay, so it's called the head stock. Awesome, thanks for that. Head stock. So we're busy with a head stock. So I'm just gonna rotate that around, extrude this one. And then just grab these points and kind of just try and get this as close as we can. This one we can probably drag out a bit, rotate a bit, and um, then we can extrude this one. Bring that around. I'm going to probably... Uh, let's see what we can do here. Yeah, that's looking nice. And then this one we can rotate in there like so. And now I'm gonna right click on this curve and just click on toggle cyclic, and it's gonna complete our curve. So now I'm gonna scale this one in all the way to zero, and I'm gonna scale this one in all the way to zero, and that didn't work at all. So I think what I need to do here is just grab, hmm, scale that in. Ah, okay, so that one went crazy. So scale that in. Okay, that's looking better. And same with this one. Scale that in. Scale that in. And scale that in. Okay, I'm just going to move this one out so it's kind of kind of level. All right, so let's save. So now I'm going to extrude this one as well. So this curve with this curve selected, um, I'm going to go to my curve settings and then just extrude like that. We can always change the, the height later once we, we're happy with what we have. So I'm going to make a duplicate of that. So Shift D and then move it to the side. 
and then with it selected press M and then move it to the backup collection as you can see there it's it's disabled so we can't see it okay so now I'm gonna convert this to a mesh so right click convert to mesh and you can see it's a mesh now and then I'm gonna set this to shade flat uh, because yeah shade smooth can mess up quite a bit so with this I'm just gonna select all those edges press F to full and then we're gonna do the same at the bottom so uh, control click one of these to select the loop and then press F on the keyboard to close that down okay so let's have a look quickly um, I think I just need to start to rename some of these things so this part is the neck and this part is the headstock as Parsival researched for us headstock like that okay this is quite a cool song this is called demon uh, the instrumental very cool stuff okay so now we need to just kind of move things into place here so our neck um, I think this body we can move this bottom face up slightly so it's a bit thick just like that and in this part the headstock we need to move up as well so that I wonder if yeah I think the neck is probably the neck needs to be thinner than the rest so I'm gonna scale that in the Z axis so just something like that and then I want to move it up so we can still see it on the top so GZ just move it up so we can see it peeking out there and then I just want to see this back section where it's supposed to be so I think if we move this part up so it's kind of uh, kind of in the middle and then we can always scale this down a bit so S Z maybe maybe like that yeah so it's looking okay so far remember to grab a Udemy coupon in the chat right at the top you'll see there's a link that I posted and it's a free coupon to my Blender course. Usually it's about $20. Um, it used to be like $99, but I brought it down to about $20, and now it's free for you guys. Uh, first of all, I'm only doing Blender streams at the moment. I actually moved from Maya. Um, I used to move, oh, I used to use Maya for my work and everything else. And then I discovered Blender. So, no more Maya. Sorry. Um, yeah, and they also stopped the education licenses, or they made it a bit more difficult to use those um, educational free licenses. So I decided I'm going to move out over to Blender, and it's perfect for the stuff that I'm doing. So yeah, do you use Maya and Blender? Okay, so next, what are we going to do next? I think um, I'm going to load a reference image here on the side as well because I think we are done tracing, so I'm going to hide this empty. And what I usually do here is I create a little extra section here. So I right-click here in the corner and then do a horizontal split. So I make a little extra window here just below my outliner. Um... And then you can just change this to an image editor and then image open and then you can load your your reference and there you go and the cool thing is you can zoom in here and you can zoom out and kind of pan it around and and look at the things that you are or the part that you're busy with 
So I think what we can do next Maybe let's create these three little little knobbies. So I'm just gonna place my 3D cursor on this face. So because I wanna create these three knobs on top of this face. So you select the face and then go shift S, cursor to select it. And then you know if you create a new object, it's gonna create it right there. So I'm gonna create, go out of edit mode and then create a new cylinder. I think a cylinder should be fine. Um, just scale this down, move it up a bit. And uh, yeah, so they are slightly bigger at the bottom and then they kind of go inwards and then a little knobby that you can turn. So let's just save, 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 save. So I'm gonna move this down and scale this in like so and then just extrude this up and then we can probably bevel that section so control b to bevel and then just bevel that i think it's a little bit much so i'm going to move this top section down so to expand your selection you can just do a control plus 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 and then gz to move that down maybe like that and then what I want to do is I want to set my origin to this face here at the bottom so that I can snap it to the guitar. Because currently the you'll see the pivot point is right there at the top, which is not too nice. So a really easy way to do that is go into edit mode, select the face that you want to set your pivot to, and then set your 3D cursor there first. So shift S, cursor to select it and then go out of edit mode, right click, set origin to 3D cursor. So it's gonna then jump there, and now you can see your pivot is right on the bottom of that face, in the middle of that face, basically. Okay, so you moved over to Maya because that's what they're gonna teach in the um, college where you're going. Yeah, I don't have any issues with Maya. Maya is great because a lot of studios still use it and I'm sure they're going to still use it for many years to come. Um, but I just think Blender is something that should not be overlooked by studios. Like I'm working for a big studio um, and it's an international company and we work on big international clients and luckily they don't tell us what software to use. So each little department or each little office around the world can kind of choose what software they want to use. And yeah, I just decided I'm going to use Blender and I'm using Blender. So I can always export like Alembic files if someone else in the company needs to work on something that I did. And then I can always export a FBX or a ABC file or an OBJ or whatever. So you can always move between the software, but obviously if you have a big team, and everyone's using Maya, then yeah, you'll probably have to use Maya. But also nothing wrong with using multiple applications. Um, also thing that I do a lot for work is 3D tracking. And I used to use a combina combination of Maya and PF Track. And um, yeah, always used to do the tracking in PF Track and then import that tracking data into Maya and then work on it from there. But nowadays I do everything in Blender. I do all my um, camera tracking and object tracking inside of Blender. And yeah, it's just so much, so much nicer just to be able to do everything in one application um, instead of jumping between and then remembering to like set your, 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 your frames per second and all of that. So it's, it just makes, makes it easier. Okay, so now we can snap that to the face. So I'm gonna set my snapping here at the top. I'm gonna set it to face. And now you can just do a GZ and hold in control to snap. And you'll see that it snaps to that face. 
So now we can move it around. So I'm going to do G and then Shift Z. So it moves in all the axes except uh, Z. So I'm going to put one around here. Shift D to duplicate and then Shift Z to stay on the on that plane. Maybe put one here and then Shift D, Shift Z. I don't know. Something like that. We can always reposition it a bit later. Okay, so next up, I think let's um, hmm, let's see what we're gonna do next. Maybe these three, the pickups. I think you call them the pickups. These are the little magnets that will pick up the vibrations of each string. So, let's see. They obviously need to be the width of the neck. And um, yeah, so let's, let's just do that. So I'm gonna set my cursor back to this face. And I think Let's do a, um, what's the easiest going to be for this? Probably a little circle. Let's just create a circle mesh. Just bring that up, scale it down. Let's see if we can do something here. So, got all these points Let's just have a look from the top so we can probably take hmm let's see so we need more points okay now let's delete this circle and let's see what we can use obviously round out a plane as well or we can do a cylinder and then we can kind of do the same thing as per the circle I think that might work as well I'll just move that up make it smaller okay I think I'm overthinking this so let me just see, uh, so if we move that, um, yeah, so what I'm going to try do here, uh, so if you select one of these vertices and you press N on the keyboard, it brings up this little transform thing and you can see the exact position of that vertice. So I want to see the X axis number so I can make sure these two are parallel to each other. So, I wonder if I can probably just extrude them and then up, but I'll have to then kind of reconnect them all again. So, no, that's not going to work. So, okay, so I'm going to take this one, copy the X axis number, and I'm going to select this one, paste it right there, and then this one, paste it right there. And I'm going to do the same with the other side. So p copy that X axis of that one and then paste it there and there. I'm probably doing this completely wrong. Um, but let's see what happens. So I'm going to just squash the down a bit. So S and then Z. And um, just move that down. Something like that. And maybe we can make it slightly thinner as well. Let's see. Yeah, maybe slightly. So I'm going to scale it in the X axis. 
until we get something like that. Okay, let's switch off this X-ray view. And now we can move this down. So GZ, place it into position, just like that. And now I wanna add these six little magnets as well. So I can probably add them as an extra object. <coughs> so I'm gonna do a shift S cursor to select it and I'm gonna create a new little magnet on there. So I'm gonna create a cylinder, scale it all the way down. So we only have that and then scale that down in the Z. And now I want to create an array to create our six uh, little magnets. So I'm going to move this one down. And then with that one magnet selected, I'm going to go to my modifiers and then add a array modifier. And then we want to array that in the Y. So I'm going to set that to one and I'm going to set my X to zero. And then we want six of those. And then we can just kind of expand them to get something that looks all right. Let me just look at this from the top. Yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna apply that array yet. I'm just gonna see if that's all good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna group these together so selecting that part and then shift clicking on those ones and then pressing um, I think you can just press J and let me just see oh it's uh, command J to join them together and now because we have an array it's gonna do the array so that's not gonna work so we'll probably have to apply this array first so I'm gonna select my little magnets go to apply with that modifier and uh, yeah now I'm just gonna join them together so select both of them right click join and now this is one object so now we can duplicate that as many times as we want so I'm gonna take that one duplicate it in the X axis to about here and then duplicate again in the X to about here and then I'm going to rotate this one in the X axis, so R and then Z, oh sorry, in the Z axis, yeah. And before I want to do that, I just want to set the pivot point so it's kind of centered on that object. So right click, set origin to geometry, and that should center it. So now you can see if I rotate it, it's centered. And now we can kind of just give this one a bit of an angle. So as you can see there, that one is slightly angled like so I think these knobs need to be bigger what do you guys think so I'm gonna scale them up move them over maybe I just want to see if they are still snap to this face so I'm just doing like GZ and then holding control to snap them to the face GZ snap to the face. Let's have a look from the top. Yeah, that's okay for now. All right, so let's do a quick save. Okay, so what do we need to do next? Uh, we can maybe do this section. I don't have a high resolution of this part. But this is obviously just this, the mechanism that holds the strings in place. So it's probably just like a little square and then it's got these little holes on the side that you put your string through and it connects to the other side. So I think it's, let's quickly do that. So I'm going to create a basic cube scale it down move it over so just want to make sure it's aligned with a neck 
So I'm going to scale this in a Y and then just kind of position it so it's matching that side of the guitar. So I'm going to slide it over to maybe around here. And then we can scale this down. If you want to zoom in on a uh, specific object, just press full stop on your numpad. And then it's going to just zoom in there. So I'm going to scale this down and then move that down. Where are you guys from, by the way? Let me know in the comments where you're from. So something like this. And then I'm going to go into edit mode, add a loop cut as we do and I want to take this face and I want to extrude it and that's going to be the area where the strings are going to go through so now we need these little six of these little holes going through here so we can do it with a boolean that will probably be the easiest way to do this so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna set my 3d cursor right here on this plane and I'm gonna go out of edit mode and I'm gonna create a cylinder scale it down all the way and then we want to rotate it in the y-axis 90 degrees like that and I want to move it to the side maybe make it a little smaller and we can scale it in the x-axis and then just move it over slightly so we have something like that and then we're gonna array this okay so you're from uh, Canada nice I'm from Cape Town South Africa welcome Canada so I'm gonna add an array and we want to go in the Y axis. So I'm going to set the X to zero, Y to one, and then we want six of these. And then we can just kind of expand them. So now we need to match them up again, just so that they kind of centered. Something like that. Okay. Okay, so now we can do a boolean. So I'm going to select this object because this is the object that we're going to cut. Uh, let me first apply the array. So I'm going to select the array and then apply. Just save that. And then I'm going to select this part because this is the part that we want to punch those, those little holes in. And I'm going to add a boolean modifier um, I wonder if I should apply the scale first well let's see what happens if it breaks we can always do it again so now I'm gonna choose my object I'm gonna choose these cylinders but now they are separate objects so first I need to join them together so I'm gonna cancel that and I'm gonna select oh they all one yeah okay so they're all together so it's perfectly fine so we can just use this little picker and choose that one and um, difference should be good yes yeah, so if you go to wireframe you'll see that it's done the cut and if we go back to solid and we hide these you'll see we have our little holes they're probably a bit big but I'm not gonna worry too much now so we can now go ahead and we can apply this boolean and I'm going to delete these. There we go. So this is the basics of that little mechanism. You can probably add a lot more detail here. Um, let's see if we can do something interesting. So maybe if we select all of these and then we do a Alt-E and then extrude faces along normals 
let's see what we get okay that is freaking out completely so i'm going to undo that let's apply the scale of this object and see what happens so with this object selected go to object and then apply scale so now let me just select this one and see what happens if we do a alt e along normals yeah you see then we get this so let's try it again so i'm gonna uh, shift alt and then click these to select all those and then alt e and then extrude along normals and then we get something like this and i think that's exactly what i wanted because now we can select all these loop cuts or these loops just do the same shift and hold in alt and then we can extrude them this way so just e extrude it's like a little thing where the strings are going to go through so now when you scale it's going to scale them all together because here at the top we've got our um, our transform pivot is set to median so i'm going to set this to individual origins and then you'll see you'll get something like this so now you can either choose if they should go bigger or smaller so i'm going to do smaller and kind of just move them in a bit like so okay hey there from india and you're currently in belgium oh that's really cool man welcome to the stream um, remember to grab a Udemy coupon. I've pasted a coupon in the chat. Uh, just use the link in the next two days. It's going to expire, but once you've used the coupon, you've got the course for life. And if you like the course, you can leave me a nice review. If you want to. Oh yeah, I also want to ask you guys, if you don't mind, um, to just click on the little like button under this video. It really helps me out because, um, yeah, YouTube is really weird nowadays with showing your videos to, to subscribers or even just normal um, viewers on YouTube. So if you guys can please click the like button, um, yeah, that just helps the algorithm to kind of share this stream with more people. Okay, so what's next? So we've got that little mechanism right there. We've got our knobs. Maybe we can do this little thingy, which is a little um, switch that you have on your guitar to switch between these pickups. I think that is what it, what it is. Like if you set it to the one side, you'll use this pickup. If you set it in the center, you'll use all of them, I think. And then if you set it to the one side, you'll only use that one so yeah i think let's let's do this so i'm probably going to use a boolean for that little um like the slider the little gap um because to edit this big face here at the top is not a nice thing to do so i'm just going to use a, a boolean for this so i'm going to create a cube scale it down all the way and then just move it over to this this area and then scale it i'm just going to change my uh, transform to local so i can scale it in its local axes and let's just see where is this thing so it's pretty close to the knobs and just a little just a little hole so I'm just gonna bring that down like so and let's see what happens if we add a boolean so I'm gonna go to I'm gonna select this bottom section and I'm gonna go to my modifiers add a whoops not that one uh, I'm gonna add a boolean and then for the object I'm gonna use this little cube and then if we look at the wireframe we'll see we've got the cut so that's good and now we can apply this and we can delete 
for this. Yeah, so I think that's fine. We can maybe go in and move this face. No, it's all right. That's fine. So now we need that little mechanism that you use to switch between those two. Now I think that's just a little cylinder with a little knobby on top. So I think that's pretty easy to add. So I'm just going to set my 3D cursor to somewhere around here. You can set your 3D cursor to a, a face or a um, edge or a vertice. So I'm going to create a cylinder. It's probably not the best way to model things like this, but I enjoy creating little, little parts for this thing. Okay, so now we have a bit of an issue. I'm going to show you guys a little trick that you can do when you have something at an angle like this. And you can obviously now go and you can do G shift Z and kind of position and kind of slide it along this edge. But let's say you want to place it perfectly in the center somewhere of this face. So what you can do is we can go into edit mode and select maybe this face right there and then we can create a new local angle for that so here by the at the top where it says your global and local you can click on the plus to create a custom one and oops let me just delete that so with that face selected click on the plus and then you can give it a name if you want to I'm just gonna leave it face and now if you select this one and you s change the transform orientation to face uh, it's gonna slide or move in that direction so that's the y and that's the x and that's the z so it kind of just change those things around a bit x okay i think this slot is too big yeah okay i'm just gonna change the music to something else hey niku geen klank hmm um everything's looking fine on my side sound wise maybe just check your check your settings um, yeah, looks like my sound is definitely working. Is anyone else having sound issues? So, okay, so I'm going to take these two edges. That mm, Okay, we need to just solo or isolate this part. So I'm going to, with this part selected, press, press Shift H just to solo that. And then go into edit mode. And then I'm going to select these two edges and I'm just going to move them in maybe to around there. Same with this side. So G and then just slide them in and maybe I need to make it a little thinner as well. It's a, it's a, bit, a bit big. So I'm going to take that face and then I'm going to move that in this direction just to have a small little thing okay so the sound is fine awesome thank you very much yeah Nikki so probably something on your side um, okay let's save 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 yeah this little stream deck that I got is freaking amazing um, I've got all my scenes on here so I can switch between my scenes so I can do the chat scene if I want to chat with you guys or if I want to go back to Blender or if I want to do Blender with no cam or if I want to do Be Right Back um, just with a press of a button. So hopefully I won't forget again to, um, to jump between these little scenes. And then something else I can do, I can see um, how many people are watching on the stream deck and I've got my music and mic, so I can mute my music, press of a button, and I can unmute it, and I can do the same with the mic. So testing, testing, 
testing, testing. So I can just mute it like that. And another cool thing is I can play sound effects. Now, I haven't really like added a lot of sound effects, but I've got a few on here that I've added, like from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. So I can do something like... Master, Master, we have a visitor. Something like that, or... I see you shiver with anticipation. Yeah, just little fun things like that. And I've got this, um, yeah, just little sound bites. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty cool. But anyways, let's get back to work. So we've got this little slider right there. Um, maybe we just need to position this correctly. So... Maybe like that and scale it up a bit. Like so. And now we can create the little handle thing at the top. So for this, I'll probably just do an extrude and a scale, and then extrude and a scale. Something like that. Maybe move it down a bit. Uh, yeah, and then I just want to make it so it's a bit of an angle. So I want to rotate this in the z, z axis. Yeah, something like so. Move it to the side. Yeah, I'm sure that's not perfect, but <laughs> I think it's okay for now. Maybe it's a little bit tall. So I'm just going to move it down something like that okay that's all right for now so I think next I'm a little bit scared of this part because <laughs> I know it's got a very weird indent I'll probably I don't know I'll probably use a boolean to create that um, but yeah I think let's see what we have on the on this thing here at the top what do you call this again the headstock yeah so um, yeah I think let's see what we can do here so we can maybe create those little now I don't know what you call them um, <laughs> the little things on the side that you turn to change the tension on your on your strings so let's hide our empty and let's do a save and I'm going to go into edit mode and then I'm just going to place my 3D cursor somewhere. Where do we want to begin? Maybe let's start with the one on this side. So I'm going to place my 3D cursor right here. Maybe this one. So shift S cursor to select it and I'm going to go out of edit mode. And then I'm going to create a cylinder, scale it down. Now one thing I'm not doing today is I'm not naming my objects. I started naming the one and then I didn't bother to name the other. Well, I named three of them. So it's always good to try and name your, name your objects because uh, things can get pretty confusing quickly once you start getting a lot or having a lot of different objects. How's everyone doing today? Everyone having a nice long weekend? So now, currently I still have the transform orientation set to face, which is that little slider that we did there. And, um, oh cool, so you got your sound sorted out. Awesome stuff, welcome, welcome. Now you can hear the sounds. Let's play a little sound for you. Master, master, we have a visitor. There we go. I still want to get like a little welcome sound that I want to play. Anyway, so what I'm going to do here, I want to set the transform orientation to match this angle of this headstock. So I want to use these faces on the side to kind of set, set that angle. So to do that is you just select one of these faces 
and then go to the top and I'm going to delete this one we currently have here and I'm going to just add a new one we can call it headstock like so so now if we select our cylinder and we change this to headstock and we do a G and an X you'll see it's going to move in that direction which is pretty handy because you don't have to know try and match it up to stay on the side of that face which is pretty cool um, <laughs> all right so we are going to rotate this in the X 90 degrees and we're gonna scale this down quite a lot maybe like so so we need to fit six of these in here so let's see what's gonna be the easiest so zoom in by pressing full stop on your keyboard and um, yeah so now we need to create uh, that little little thing that comes out here hey Raymond welcome to the live stream I have no idea what that means Floyd Rose Tremolo it's obviously something to do with guitar and um, the funny thing is I play a bit of guitar there's my guitar there in the background I don't know if you guys can see it um, but I don't know what that means <laughs> sounds cool though so let's see what we are gonna do here I think um, mm -hmm. we can probably just extrude this out maybe like that and then squish this down so I'm gonna do a scale in the Y uh, that's gonna be very very messy I don't want to do that so <clears throat> let's see what we're gonna do here so maybe we can select two of these faces on this side and two of the faces on this side that's also gonna be a bit messy maybe that looks better and then if we do a alt e along normals um, offset uh, it might work it's a bit weird but it might actually work so let's select these faces and then we scale them down maybe maybe just something like that um, yeah so that's what we that is what we have currently so let's just zoom in on this little thing again yeah I think that's fine it's obviously not like the perfect little what do you call this things anyone know this little knobby turning thingy All right, so I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna leave it as is. Um, it's so small that we'll probably not see the the details. So maybe we we can offset them in a minute. So all right, so I'm gonna create a an array modifier, and then we're gonna go in the Y set that to zero and we are probably going to go in the Z axis no also not so if we set this to one so it's going up in a oh yeah it's the tuners thank you easy as that thanks Raymond and thanks Percival um let's see what's happening here so relative offset constant offset okay i'm just gonna eyeball it like that and then we need six of these and then we can space them out a bit so Yeah, 
that's looking all right, I think. Maybe like so. Ooh. What did I do? I'm gonna kinda get them level. This should probably be minus one. No, that's not minus one. Okay, I'm just eyeballing something like that. So I think let's apply this array and then we can maybe just offset some of them. So this is all now one object. So I'm going to go into edit mode and then select that one. And then you can right click separate selection or we can actually lose parts. So you can select all of them by pressing A, right click separate by lose parts. And now they are all individual objects. So now we can just rotate them Okay, so now we have a bit of an issue. Uh, let me just set this to median point again because our pivot stays in the same place, which is a bit of a issue. So I'm going to select this one, set origin to geometry, and then you can rotate them like so. So we just need to set origin to geometry, rotate Z, Set origin to geometry, rotate Z, maybe like so, and same with these two, rotate them a little, origin to geometry, and rotate them a bit. Okay, so we have that, and now we need these little turny, turny thingies. Tuning pegs. There we go. Uh, Raymond, the synth track is called... Uh, it's actually from Stream Beats. So if you go into Spotify and you search Stream Beats, um, you'll find the album. This is the Synth Wave album. And the song is called Wasted Keybinds. Yeah, Wasted Keybinds. Yeah, I also kind of like this. It's got that bit of 80s synth wave vibe. Quite nice. Okay, let's save. So now we're going to create those little, those, mm, they're probably part of the tuners. <laughs> All right. So let's see what we're going to do here. So this I'll probably do with um, a boolean again. I'm probably using too many, too many booleans. Let me see, is this chat gonna... Hey Omar, thanks for the comment, man. Yeah, stream beats, really, really cool. Uh, check it out, and you can use it in all your videos. You can even go to the website. I think it's just called Stream Beats if you Google it. Uh, and you can actually download all the songs and you can even download the splits so you can get like the the drums separate or the vocals uh, really really cool stuff and you can use it in any youtube video or any live stream uh, it's just really really cool it's that i don't know if you guys know that what's his name um harris from alpha gaming yeah he did it and just such a cool cool thing that he did so all right let's carry on so i'm going to set my 3d cursor to this plane and i'm going to create a little cylinder so let's just position one yeah this is not super accurate guys i'm just eyeballing eyeballing these things so that's what's going to happen here. Okay, I think I just need to set my transform back to local. And then I can probably, yeah, see a bit better what's happening here. So now we can move it around and it stays on that face. And we can place this one right here. So... I assume with these things, 
Um, oh yeah, guys, remember to grab that Udemy coupon. Uh, it's right at the top in the chat. Let me know if you can't see it, then I'll paste it again. But it's a coupon to my six hour Udemy Blender course. Uh, the link is only available for two days, but once you've grabbed it and once you uh, once you grab the course, the course is yours for life. So just make sure that you grab it in the next two days. But yeah, the link is there and uh, you guys can share it as well to your friends and families and anyone that you know want to learn Blender. So yeah, have a look. Check it out. So, okay, so these little thingies... I'll probably have to create a little something through the side. So I'm going to create an edge loop right here and right here. And then we'll probably have to make a little hole here. Hmm, let's see what we're going to do. If we delete this face and we delete that face across from it, and then we select those edges and select mm, those edges and then we can bridge edge loops so then we get that little hole straight through so that's probably the basic version of how this thing works maybe let's just do something like that up now Maybe let's move this face down. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Stretching it a bit, but no one really cares. Um, add a few more edge loops to make the birds a circle. Um, that the hole is nice and round. Oh, so you mean this little hole that goes through here. So if we add... Um, what do you mean? Like, you mean this little... So this inside should be a round little hole and not a, not a vertical thing. I think that's what you mean. Maybe what we can do is... Um, If I bring this one down, bring this one up, and maybe, I wonder if we can make this round. If we select these edges, those edges, I don't know if this is going to work, but let's have a look. This is how we learn. So if we go to Mesh, Transform, to sphere yeah okay that didn't work too well um, so if we yeah so if we create another loop cut say there another loop cut here and then we can probably add a loop cut here at the top and one at the bottom and then if we select all of these everything around oops what am I doing manually selecting them and then if we go mesh to sphere yeah that works so then we just need to do the same on the other side and then we can kind of scale it down so we select all of these all of these all of these mesh transform to sphere and you can just make sure there's some one and then we can maybe select that edge loop as well what's happening here and then we select this and then we scale this in the Z so it's a little bit more around looking something like that yeah cool awesome stuff so it's a bit janky at the top but you know what maybe maybe that's how it's supposed to be uh, <laughs> and maybe what we what can we do here at the top we can maybe inset this and just add some detail, I don't know, like that. <laughs> Maybe take it in deeper. Uh, s move that down and then scale it in. 
Loop cut to the rescue, exactly. That's what we do, yeah. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna duplicate this and kind of just position it by hand. So we can always do an array, but I don't think that's really needed. So I'm gonna change my um, my axis or my transform orientation back to this edge on the side. So I'm just gonna select one of these faces and click on this. Oh, we've got it. We've got it there still. So I can just select this one, change this to headstock. And then if we move in the x-axis, it will slide along that face. So now we can just do Shift D, duplicate, and then X, and then kind of position them. We just view this from the top, uh, G, X, and then Shift D, X, Shift D, X, Shift D, X, Shift D, X, like so. Okay, so next I think we need to create, now I also don't know what you call these, let's see you can give me the name of this in the chat first. Um, these little vertical lines that go on the neck, it's probably fret something, um, but yeah, let's, <laughs> let's create those. So I think, yeah, so we've got a, a loop cut on each of those lines, so we kind of know where to place them. And I'm just going to do little cylinders. I think that's going to be the easiest. So let's see, you can tell me what you call these things. So let's save, 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 save. Fret bars, well done, Niku. You win a Udemy coupon. Okay, so let's create a cylinder. So cylinder, scalar down, all the way, frets, frets, cool. So we are creating the frets or the fret bars or whatever you want to call them. So this one I'm going to change back to local so we can do that. And we obviously want to scale them down and we want to scale them down quite a bit. Gonna see. Probably scale them down even more. Don't fret about it. <laughs> exactly. We are not gonna fret about it. So maybe something like that. Yeah. Okay. So this neck goes I don't think it's perfectly straight it kind of goes a bit fatter at the end yeah so I can't use the same length of um, of these things so that's just yeah that's gonna cause some issues so I think I'm just gonna make them I'm gonna have them overlapping slightly and then I'm just gonna at the end kind of just move them in and snap them against those spaces but I'll probably have to do it one by one so what I want to do, how many do we need? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 of these things. Okay, I'm going to do an array for this one. And then we need to go this way. And then we need to set this to 21. And then I'm just going to kind of space them out. They're obviously not spaced evenly. So I will... Hmm. Got some guitar music going again with the synth wave. Pretty cool stuff. So... Yeah, so we'll have to move these things. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, I'm going to select those things and then shift select the neck and then press tab so we can see the lines and we can oh yeah so we still need to apply this array i'm just gonna apply the array and then kind of move them manually so now this is all one object still so going to 
into edit mode, select all of them, right click, separate by loose parts. So now we have different objects for each of these little frets. Um, and now I'm going to select all of them, including the neck. So I'm gonna drag a box like that. And uh, I don't want to select that, and I also don't want that. Oops. Not that, not that, not that, not that. Why is this thing doing this? Okay, so let's just see here. Uh, so, that, for some reason it wants to select those things. Okay, you know what? Let's just take this part, hide it, this part, hide it. And then we can do the top view again and then select everything. Cool. And then we can even isolate it if we want to. Shift H and it's only going to keep that. All right. So I think let's listen to some, some rock again. I really like this, this tune. So this album, the, what is called, um, Demon, yeah, the album is actually called Demon, the song is the single called Demon, um, and it's the instrument, they've got a, they released the instrumental version as well as a, like a vocal version as well, so it's quite nice. Okay, so we'll obviously I have to extend the size of those ones, but let's not... Let's not worry about it too much for now. Um, okay, I think let's go into, yeah. So if we go into wireframe mode, I can see the little uh, loop cuts. So I can move them like so. Uh, let's start on this side maybe. So this one should be right here. Another one here. And I'm just going to do this by hand. All manual. Yeah, it's pretty cool, eh? I really like the music. And it's got that epic kind of... 80s vibe. So let's move that in there. Yeah, I like this part. And that little solo in the background, so cool. So yeah, I'm going to share this model um, in the Discord server. I know this is not the best model in the world, but if you need a little simple guitar, you can use it. So you guys will see an invitation link in the description. So anyone can join. And then I'll paste the blend file there. Okay, let's see. What do we want to? I don't like that song. Uh, this one's quite cool. Okay, so it looks like we're missing one. Let's just make sure. Yeah. Yeah, Raymond, I'm also, I really enjoy like 80s. I was born in the 80s, early 80s, 82. And uh, I really enjoy the whole 80s sound. And then 90s, I listen to a lot of like rock and alternative kind of vibes. So yeah, all the stuff from the 80s and the 90s is always my favorite. Okay, so I'm gonna start scaling these things to match the edges now 
I'm sure there's an easy way to do this, but I will probably just use the way that I know how to do this. So I will select this face and, oh, 22, let's have a look. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Awesome stuff. So we are we are on track. Okay, so what we can do here is I'm gonna set the snapping is still on face. And I'm gonna leave this on local. And then we can take each of these little faces on the edge and then do a G and a what is this Z and then just hold in control and snap it to this face so then it will line up exactly to that edge uh, or that to that face now obviously not the most quick or the quickest thing to do but who is in a rush not me so we just do them the one side first and then I'll have to do the other side as well dun, 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 dun. I'm sure there's an easier way but sometimes it's fun doing it the slow way uh, right so I'm going to take that one GZ hold and control to snap and then let's just center our So, and GZ, snap. So we have to do this 44 times. Hmm. Fun and games. I'm not sure if I'm going to add strings. I should probably add strings. Yeah, probably little, little cylinders. Just remember to save your project. But luckily we haven't had a crash. So that's good. All right, so, so now we're just kind of re-snapping them because these ones are going over. Uh, dun dun dun. Righty, and snap this one back. No fast though, but we don't know either. Yeah, I'm sure there is a way. I'm sure you can use some sort of um, modifier or something. But if you don't know, then you don't know. Then you just do it the normal way. There's usually like 10 ways to do anything in 3D anyways. So there are so many different ways. Okay, so we're done with the one side. All nice and aligned. And here we go again. So this one, snap, snap. And we snap all of these. And we kind of just now and then to center the view so we can move around easily. But it's luckily not taking that long. What's the time now? Ah, always almost been two hours. Let's see how far we can get. I don't think I'm gonna texture this model in this live stream, uh, maybe in a next live stream. But yeah, what I'm gonna do is, if you guys join the Discord server, I want to, I want us to kind of do things and um, like little challenges and see. No, sorry, I'm talking and working at the same time, and that usually doesn't work. So what, what I was saying is in the Discord. Um, I was thinking of like we come with an idea for a model for the live stream and then after the live stream you guys can either create your own model and then share the renders in the discord and we kind of look at them and we can discuss them and yeah just like a bit of a community effort and then obviously if you, if you guys have any ideas of things to model in the next live stream also let me know in the discord and we can yeah just come up with like different ideas and just learn blender together always fun okay let's do this one we're almost there guys 
Almost there. So this one we snap. And this one we snap. Snap. Whoops, that's not going to work. Okay. Okay, so we have a total of, hmm, oh, I'm going to, I think the hidden stuff is not showing. I want to see what the total number of faces are that we've got in the scene, but we can have a look now, now. So yeah, where are you guys from? Anyone that has not... Um, Niku, sorry, what are you saying? Or paste it here. Oh yeah, I can, I can definitely paste the invite link there. I'll do it in a second. Let me just finish these ones quickly. I can definitely do that. Alright, uh, give me a sec. Let me just find that. that invite link quickly. So I think if I go to this one, let me just pause that and yeah, yes, the link, this called server copy. Okay, I'm going to paste it. Here we go based and whoa that's a really really long link it can't be right just give me another second so copy and paste there we go that's the invite link to the tunnel vision discord server yeah so it's all in there Okay, so let's unhide everything and see what we have. So let's just save and then Alt H to unhide everything and let's hide our our reference. Hide. And um, yeah, that's that's what we have. So obviously a lot of work still uh, to make it nice and smooth. Maybe what we can do is maybe just add another two loop cuts here. And I'm going to try and add a um, subdivision surface to this body. Yeah, that doesn't really work because it, yeah, it's freaking out at the bottom and the top. What if we do simple? And if we just smooth the shade, but then we're going to get those issues at the top again with a smooth shade. So uh, for now, we can just leave it as is. I wonder if we do a smooth shade just on these side edges, basically. I just want to see how that looks. So yeah, you can probably do that. Um, <laughs> but then I need to undo those two loop cuts. So let's just undo that. Undo, 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 undo. Undo, undo. undo. Okay, cool. So what we can do is we can select all of these faces around and we can only set those to sh uh, shade smooth. So right click, shade smooth, and now it will kind of have that vibe. So obviously the bevel here at the top you can kind of still see that i'm sure we can smooth that as well um, i wonder what will be the easiest way no that's not gonna work shift control plus no um yeah it doesn't want to select them okay that's fine i'm just gonna leave it like that for now and anything else that we can add you guys think we need to add the strings 
Hmm, you say it's saying that the invite link is wrong. We can qu quickly have a look at it. Um, let me just go into the Discord. Uh, Raymond, auto smooth. Yeah, I've seen people use that. I've never really used that myself. Let's have a look. So if you go, you say if you select your object and you go into the data, this one, I, the object data, and then we go to auto smooth um, under. Let's have a look. Is it on normals? Auto smooth. Okay, yes, cool. So then you can set the angle. So anything, just increase that. Let's see if we can get those. Hmm. Okay, so 180 is the max. Okay, oh, that's pretty cool. So you can just set your um, your angle and then it will smooth anything up to that angle, basically. Um, I'm just going to check the invite link quickly in Discord. Give me a second. Um, invites. Uh, let's create a new one, maybe. I'm just going to create a new invite link for you guys. Okay, I've got a new invite link just copy that and yeah so try that one that one should be active for seven days like the default invitation link and uh, yeah all right so obviously still a lot of things can happen here like we can make this a bit nicer um, but I don't think I'm going to worry too much about that now. And I'm also not going to do the strings. You guys can add the strings if you want to. So yeah, just a very, very basic guitar shape. Uh, how long has it been now? Yeah, almost two hours. I started at 6 o'clock local time and it's 10 to 8. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to kind of end the stream here. So let's go back to our chat view. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, it was really cool to see more people in the chat. This is probably the busiest chat I ever had since I started these live streams, so that's really cool. And it was really cool to yeah to see everyone from around the world, from India, from Canada. Really, really cool. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to share this model. I'm going to upload this blend file into the Discord server, and you guys can download it and create some renders and share your renders with everyone. And um, yeah, if you have any ideas for the next stream, let me know and uh, then we can model something interesting. And uh, yeah, remember to click the like button. That's the only thing I'm going to ask of you guys. You don't have to subscribe and all of those things because I know subscribing doesn't really do anything nowadays on YouTube. So it's all about the likes. So that would really, really help me out. So yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope, you I hope to see you guys next time as well. Currently, I don't have a set schedule because I'm kind of trying out different time zones and different times and different days. So sometimes it's on a Friday. Sometimes it's on a Sunday. Um, I've also tried like during the week. So I'm just kind of seeing where I get the most viewers. But anyways, thanks again for watching and yeah have a, have a cool long weekend and i will see you guys in the next stream cheers goodbye